Dear students, I am back with a new video on the first day of 2025 and at the outset let me wish all of you a very happy, healthy and prosperous 2025. I also wish that you have a cracking start to building projects during this year. With this video where I am going to discuss issues related to the process of building project in your course called electronic design workshop for the fourth semester ECE and EIOT students and the sixth semester EIOT students and their course is titled IOT workshop. So, let us discuss the issues. Now, as you know the lab activities for both these courses include two components. The first one is experiments, these are listed in the course syllabus and will be displayed in the laboratory as well. And the second part is that you have to perform, you have to complete a project in a group. So, let us see how you are going to do the project. The very important aspect for the building project is to consider a team. So, I propose that for the ECE fourth semester students, we can have a team size of 3 and I expect that you will find your teammates from within your lab group because if you go beyond the lab group then evaluating those projects may be little difficult. For the sixth semester EIOT students because they are slightly senior, I propose a team size of 2 students. They can choose their team member from either of the two lab groups. I hope this part is very clear. Now, there is one more issue with the project evaluation. For the fourth semester students, we are following the NEP protocol and in this protocol, there would not be any final practical exam, which means the evaluation of your lab activity will be an ongoing semester long process. And so, it puts much more pressure on you to complete your project and all other activities related to the laboratory within the semester. Whereas, for the sixth semester EIOT students, we are following the old protocol, which means we will have a end semester practical examination and so their projects and their lab file may take some more time till the exam day. So, I hope you are all clear about these aspects. Big question is how do you select the project? Now, there are two methods. One is explore ideas you may have. You may have observed some problems around you in the society at home or elsewhere and you can imagine to capitalize on that problem and to create a project around that problem. That is one option. Second is you may search the internet. You are free to do that because here we are not inventing something, here we are not building something which has never been built before. The whole idea is to learn the process of building a project. Therefore, you may seek the help of internet and adapt ideas that you may find there. Let me give you an idea about a project based on exploration of ideas. Now, if you are a student at NSUT, you know that when you enter the main gate, there are a couple of guards standing there and one of the guards is continuously writing down the uh, license number of the incoming cars or vehicles. You could automate that process by providing them an IOT device with which they take a picture of the incoming vehicle and your IOT project would extract the number plate information and post it on the cloud. This could be a very good project and I suggest some of you may pursue this idea. Now, once you decide that you want to do a certain project, the bigger question is how do you get into the details of the project? What all will be involved in that project? And for that, we have developed this uh, project visualization tool called the six box model. 
I am going to cover this in the classroom as well, but for the sake of uh, that it is uh, understood by everyone, I am going to discuss it here. The six box model partitions any given project into six individual boxes based on the functionality. So, you have input box which contains which contains input devices. Uh, this could be environmental sensors or it could be human interaction devices such as switches and keypads. Then the input of from the input box will go into the signal processing box. This signal processing box most of the time would be a microcontroller. The microcontroller will execute a program and will produce appropriate outputs which will go into the output box and the output may contain visual devices, it could have LCDs, it could have LEDs, it could have speakers, it could have uh, motors and things like that. Of course, any electronic system is incomplete, cannot function without a power supply. So, you must have a suitable power supply. Especially if you are building a portable uh, system, then it must have a battery powered power supply. Then in the case of IoT uh, devices, you need a communication box which will help you communicate with the internet and sometimes you need another box called host and storage box. So, based on uh, your project proposal, you can think of partitioning the requirements into these six boxes or five boxes depending upon what all box you need to employ and then work on the details of each individual box. Uh, your class, how are you going to implement your project? Now, as I mentioned, we are going to use a microcontroller and we may use a Arduino Nano. I specifically urge you not to use Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno is a variant of Arduino and it is very clumsy to be used in a project. It is good for working using in the laboratory but uh, integrating in it into a project is little difficult. So, I urge you not to use UNO. Other than that, you can use an ESP32 or a STM32 based blue pill. You can also use a Raspberry Pi and of course, you are most welcome to use a bare microcontroller chip and in fact, I may give you extra credit for using a bare microcontroller chip instead of these uh, microcontroller boards, microcontroller platforms. So, that takes care of the signal processing element of the six box model. I do not recommend at all, it is a strictly no no to use ready made function boards. You will see that lot of Chinese cheap function boards are available in the market and you may be tempted to use them. If you use them, they hide a lot of learning, they prevent you from learning lot of concepts and so I do not recommend using such ready made PCBs, there is a big unless, unless it can be proven that the functionality that you require cannot be implemented using bare ICs and I would allow you to use such ready made boards in such cases. For example, you may want to have a Bluetooth connectivity. So, finding Bluetooth ICs is little difficult, so I may allow that. Another aspect is how are you going to integrate the project? Putting the project on a breadboard is again not acceptable at all and you must solder your circuit on a zero board or you may create a custom PCB. We have machine in the laboratory for milling a PCB, you are most welcome to use that. You can also create a PCB using what is called as a toner transfer method. It is very fast and it is very inexpensive and a project as I mentioned project on the breadboard is simply not acceptable. Or fourth aspect is that the project must have its own power supply, uh, especially if you are building a IoT project or a portable project, it must have a battery driven power supply and it must also have a suitable charger. Projects must be enclosed in a suitable enclosure, without an enclosure the project is not a project and you can choose a ready made uh, enclosure, there are many ready made enclosure options available or you can create a custom enclosure using a milling machine or a 3D printer or you can even put together a box out of wood that is also an option. And at the end of it, you must provide a project report and as I had mentioned, 
the project report must be written in LaTeX. So, these are the ideas that you must uh, utilize for implementing your project. Now, the question is what kind of projects uh, can you implement? Here are some ideas. This is not a very exhaustive list. This is only a suggestive list and I urge you to search the internet for more ideas. So, you can build a picture frame. This is a uh, desktop device which will continuously show all the pictures that are stored on the uh, resident SD card. Uh, you can build a sound level and a spectrum analyzer. So, you put it on your desk or you carry it around with you and it will show you what is the noise level, what is the sound level and it can also show you the uh, spectrum of the sound. You can create a low speed digital storage oscilloscope which may be very useful for recording scientific phenomena. For example, you may have a coil through which you uh, drop a magnet, then the voltage that is induced across that coil can be recorded by this uh, low speed DSO and can be then further processed. You can create a DSO game player that is you create a game which uses the screen of a digital storage oscilloscope for the visual part. You can build a project what is called as a twilight based street light control. Twilight is a phenomena uh, when the sun rises or when the sun sets. So, before the sun rises there is some usable light similarly after the sun sets there is also some usable light and you can turn on the street lights after the twilight or you can turn off the uh, street lights just at the onset of morning twilight and this depends on the coordinates. It also depends on the weather meaning the uh, day of the year and so your uh, signal processing element would compute the twilight time for each day to turn on and turn off the street lights. This can be a very useful project. You can build a scientific calculator with a graphic display you can plot waveforms and things like that. You can create a visitor counter. Now, what is a visitor counter? You may have gone to stores or you may have searched about restaurants on internet and often times it shows you whether the uh, particular restaurant uh, is busy during that time. So, this can be implemented using a visitor counter that the guard at the entrance of the restaurant or store uh, will click a uh, button as people enter the store and it will also record the time and then it can present this information on an hourly basis on the cloud which you can then access on the internet showing the uh, level of busyness for a given uh, place. More uh, project ideas you can build a temperature data logger. For example, have you ever wondered what is the temperature under the hood of your car? Now, if you had a portable data logger you could place it uh, under the hood, uh, run your car for a day and then remove the temperature data logger and milk out the data to know that when the car was running or when the car was uh, still what is the temperature under the hood. Speed of sound verification and temperature dependence. You can build a scientific project where you can verify the speed of sound and its dependence on temperature. You can create a project for plotting automatic plotting of diode and other uh, two pin electronic devices the characteristic curves of uh, these components. You can create a audience poll uh, keypad for a Khan Banega Karodpati kind of program. You can create a, a system to measure the time period of a pendulum you know in the physics laboratory you have performed this experiment, but you have used a uh, stopwatch to measure the time and it, that is not a very accurate approach, but using this uh, automatic uh, system of time measurement you can get very precise results. You can build a data logger which uh, records 9 degree of freedom information. This relates to uh, uh, magnetometer, uh, accelerometer and things like that. You can build a multilingual talking device. If you remember in my first lecture I had shown you a talking thermometer. Uh, you can create such a device, but one with an option to speak in different languages not just in English, but maybe in Hindi, maybe in Tamil, maybe in Telugu and so on. So, you can build a multilingual talking device. 
you can build a bicycle computer that is a computer which tells you what distance you have traveled what speed you were traveling at and things like that this is attached to the handlebar of a bicycle with a sensor on the wheel and uh, it measures time distance acceleration speed and things like that you can create a solar irradiance meter that is the amount of uh, sunlight that falls at a given place you can use a solar irradiance meter for recording that you can create a project which controls the uh, facial expressions of a robot so you can move the eyes you can move the eyelids you can move the lips and uh, if you attach uh, suitable sensors then this robotic face could respond to the environment you can create a weather station something that will record temperature humidity wind speed and then post this uh, data on the cloud and uh, at the end you can build a religious aarti player in various uh, you know whatever the aarti may be and you could play it at fixed times maybe in a temple or maybe at your home so these are some of the project ideas uh, i hope uh, Uh, you can utilize them you can adapt them you can search the internet and get some newer ideas and build a great project i wish you the very best in your pursuit of building a wonderful project thank you